really happy to be here with all of you uh, today. We just finished a uh, three-day biodiversity caravan in Palawan. Usually what people know of Palawan is, you know, Puerto Princesa, uh, then you go to El Nido, and you go to Lagan. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to see the areas which are vulnerable to mining. Uh, we wanted to see the biodiversity that was there. We wanted to document it together with very well-known directors and ABS-CBN. We have two well-known directors who are here with us. It's uh, Brillante Mendoza, he was the best director in Cannes. And you can give them a round of applause. <laughs> and then we had uh, Pepe Jogno, who's the, who won uh, best film in the Venice Film Festival. And there are other film directors that want to come here. And I, I know, like for example, ngayon ko lang nalaman na all of this is happening in Palawan before. My, my knowledge of Palawan was in this really beautiful place. But I had no idea, talagang hindi ko alam na may tao na nagdudusa dito. I really didn't know that there were a lot of communities and people suffering here. And I really didn't know that Palawan was under the threat of mining. All I knew that it was really beautiful. So this has all been a big shocker to me and to many, many people. And I know that the reason why things happen is because people don't know. People don't know. Therein lies the role of media. You know, in fact, as I go around and we've gotten signatures everywhere, uh, you know what's happened is, you know, Jerry died and, uh, and he, was, uh, he, he had this radio program and he was very much against mining and he was very much against corruption. So, with his death, it fueled the whole campaign because this is what he believed in. And because of the Save Palawan movement, because it saved, saved Palawan, no to mining in Palawan and in any key biodiversity area, what has happened in the country today is actually an awakening with Palawan leading the way. In fact, as I speak today, uh, this afternoon, who will join us in Feast of the Forest will be uh, five mayors from Eastern Samar, four mayors from Sibuyan, the governor of Romblon. We have nine officials, and they're all coming here to Puerto Princesa to see how Mayor Hagedorn did it. Because Mayor Hagedorn uh, has been here since 1992. And the significant thing about Puerto Princesa is Mayor Hagedorn said, no mining, no logging. So what we want to say is that there are alternatives. You don't have to destroy your natural resources to earn. So I just want to show you in case you don't know. Let's look at the Puerto Princesa experience. You know, Puerto Princesa is within uh, the island of Palawan. It shares the same ecology, the same air, the same water. It's in the island of Palawan. However, the only difference is, is that Mayor Hagedorn calls the shots. He doesn't have to follow the governor. If the governor is pro-mining, if the rest of Palawan is pro-mining, Mayor Hagedorn said here in Puerto Princesa there will be no mining and no logging. So what did he do? He concentrated on tourism. He concentrated on agriculture. He concentrated on good governance. He focused on Muro, he, fo he banned Muroami, cyanide fishing, troll fishing, dead corals. He increased his forest cover. You know, you have the Feast of the Forest uh, every year. There's no other city or municipality in the whole country that has a feast of the forest, and actually he's the only one that has increased the forest cover from 52% to 63%. He went wind, he's looking at alternative energy, he went solar. Today, today, Puerto Princesa is a booming tourist destination. From 50 million investments to over 10 billion. From seven banks, to 32 banks, from 12,000 tourists to half, to over half a million tourists, from one flight a week to 11 flights a day. 
And he banned mining and he banned logging. So tell me that mining works when a place which has had mining for 36 years is one of the poorest municipalities in the entire province. But Tarasa, you know the miners tell me, well, it's a first class municipality. Yes, in terms of revenue and in terms of infrastructure, but Tarasa is first class. However, in terms of incidence of poverty, it's ranked number seven. It's one of the top ten poorest municipalities in the province. So tell me that mining works when a place that has had mining for so long has a cholera epidemic, has a diarrhea epidemic. Tell me that mining works. Tell me that mining works if the, air, the provinces which has had prevalent mining are the poorest provinces in the country. Take Samar, poor. Surigao, poor. Sambuanga, the poorest province in the whole country. Benguet. It's on and on again. Show me that mining works when the areas which are mined are poor. I will show you Puerto Princesa, which has banned mining and banned logging and has economic indicators like this. I will show you my five ecotourism sites, which are now being managed by the wife of Jerry and which Jerry Ortega managed, which has gotten themselves out of poverty in three years. Three years. Okay, look at these. These are our fishermen. And what we did is we gave them, and I hope if you haven't gone to our ecotourism projects, you will come. In fact, that's why the mayors of Sibuyan and the, the mayors of Samar are coming. Because para, so we can show them, ipakita natin sa kanila hindi kailangan magmina. E dito sa pag-alaga ng kanikasan, nag-angat naman ang buhay nila. And look at these fishermen. We built a boat. And then we, and then we gave the fishermen cellular phones because the... The, the dolphins and the tuna eat the same fish. It's galuko. So if, if you so the fishermen use the dolphins as spotters. So if you want to find the tuna, you have to look for the dolphins. So what we did is we gave the fishermen cellular phones and we gave them a boat. And so when you go on the boat, the, the marketing thing is no dolphin, no pay. Because you go on the boat, then you say, para saan yung mga dolphins? Alam nila eh, kasi ginagamit nila as spotters, okay? So you can see here, we built the boat, and that's Jerry there. So when you go on the boat, you don't only see the dolphins, you can eat, and then you can also eat fresh tuna, you can eat kilawin, which Jerry was making there, and then you bring wasabi and soy sauce, and you can eat uh, sashimi. Okay, and that's the fisherman. Then we have the Iwahi uh, Firefly, which won gold in the Pacific last year. This is the penal colony where we, we, uh, we donated boats and then a visitor center. And it won gold. And when I went on this banca ride, uh, the chairman of the Boatmen's Association told me, Ma'am, kung tutuusin lang, karamihan ng mga boatmen natin may motorcyclo na. And the boatman who was bringing me on the boat, he said, Ma'am, hindi ko lang pinapaaral ang anak ko, ako ang nag-aaral. And then last week, my ecotourism manager went to me and she said, Ma'am, alam mo yung iwahi firefly kung gaano nag-angat ang buhay nila? Karabihan sa kanila, over 20,000 a month na ang kita nila in three years. Three years. Can the mining company say that after 36 years? Can they? Okay, then this is the Iwahi Firefly, and then we have the snorkeling, where uh, if you go to Honda Bay, the fishermen there, dati noon, nag-cyanide fishing sila, tapos napuputol yung daliri nila, so we told them, huwag na kayo mag-cyanide fishing kasi masyadong maganda yung mga corals dito. So what we did is we put up uh, that school, it's a school in the middle of the sea, and now the boatmen can charge a thousand pesos to bring tourists there. They rent out snorkels and the place is so, so beautiful. And we're going to bring the mayors of Sibuyan and Samar there. Then we have our mangrove where we donated a floating restaurant. So they, you can cook food, uh, you can sing, and then they sell their handicrafts. In fact, ako yan. And then ang nagyara, we donated this, and then sila lang ang kumawa, the Bayanihan spirit. Okay, I want to talk to you about the Bayanihan spirit, because what's the problem with mining? You know, you earn and you don't care if somebody suffers. Is that Filipino? That you earn and make money and you don't care if your people suffer? No, this one in ecotourism, everybody works together. 
Okay, this naman is the Ugong Rock climb where the community there was very poor. Talagang hirap na hirap sila, hindi nila nahirapan sila sa pagkain, nahirapan sila na uh, to send their kids to school. So what we saw is, you know, Jerry said, Ma'am, alam mo yung Ugong Rock sobrang maganda. It's an 18 million year rock formation. And so what we did was we put up uh, ropes so that you can climb inside. We put up a visitor center. Okay, we only spent like 350,000. So what happened, you climb up and then you climb down. And I think they charge 150 pesos, Bati, correct? 100 pesos per climb. And then you climb down. So in isip natin, why, not, why don't we do a zip line? So you climb up, then you zip line down, you pay for the zip line, then baka you climb up again, no? <laughs> so, and then so we decided to put a zip line last year. And in fact, uh, that's Jerry on the zip line. So today, this Ugong Rock, they're earning so much money that as of March, March of this year, March of this year, um, my people have told me they're earning net. You know what net is, right? Net revenue. Net is, pagkatapos ng bawasan yung expenses, yung net revenue. They're earning net revenue of 500,000 pesos. March lang. Okay, so they're earning so much money that what they want to do now is you pay it forward. Kasi I'm not asking any money back from them. I said, pay it forward. Kung natulungan kayo, tulungan mo naman yung iba. So then you pay it forward, and now they're helping the nearby barangay. Tell me that this is not a better way. And clearly it shows that if you take care of God's creation, nature will take care of you. Look at the numbers that I have. On the first year, we had 1,286 visitors. On the second year, we had an astonishing 20,000 visitors on the second year. On the third year, we had 29,000 visitors. On the fourth year, which is today, as of April, as of April, we already have 25,000 visitors. On the first year, they were earning 190,000. On the next year, they were earning 2 million. On the third year, they were earning 2.85. On the fourth year, it's over 3 million pesos. You know how much we invested? 1,500,000 pesos in five communities, 1,500,000 pesos. On the third year, we have already earned it back double. Double. So I asked the people in Nara and Brooks Point and Batarasa, is this not the way to go? Bakit sisiraan ang kalikasan? Bakit? You know, when, when, uh, when, when Lina and, and Jerti here are, are saying everywhere, what, you know, people suffer. Is this the way to go? And here, clearly, in Puerto Princesa, we show that by taking care of the environment, the people's lives can come up. Alam mo yung, alam mo yung global warming, di ba? Climate change, alam mo ba yan? Okay, kasi the, the polluting companies are sending out carbon, so it's ruining the ozone layer, and so the, pli the, the, the planet is getting overheated. So that's why the coral reefs are getting bleached, the ice caps in the North Pole are melting because our planet is getting overheated. So there was all the countries in the world met and there was what's known as the Kyoto Protocol. And in the Kyoto Protocol, it said that the countries that are emitting carbon dioxide, like America and Europe, they should compensate for their sins by buying carbon credits. That's what carbon credits is all about. Okay, do you know wait, do you know the value, the value of this is and this is not according to me, this is according to the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development. According to the PCSD, the value of Palawan's carbon credits alone is one hundred and thirty trillion pesos. One hundred and thirty trillion pesos, okay. Then the Foreign Chamber of Commerce said that the value of the minerals of the entire country is 1.4 trillion dollars. 1.4 trillion dollars amounts to 60 trillion pesos. What does this say? The value of Palawan's forests alone, I'm not even talking of Isabella, I'm not even talking of the rest of the country, I'm just saying Palawan's forests alone
alone is double, double the total mineral load of the entire country. Okay, so you're saying one is can be cash it? Well, I want to let you know that a few months ago, Norway paid Indonesia $100 million. It's a fact. They paid them $100 million as a deposit. A $1 billion, $1 billion reservation for the carbon credits of Indonesia. They paid a deposit of $100 million and the Philippines has so much more than Indonesia. Why? Why will we mutilate it for the minerals that we don't benefit from? What happens to the minerals? The foreigners get the minerals and brings it out uh, to other countries and they make the profit. Do they pay the cost of externalities? There's college students here. Are there some business students? Can you raise your hands? Are there business students here? Okay, even if you're not business, do you know what externalities are? You pay the cost. You pay the development cost. What happens in this country? When the mining companies come, they don't pay for the cost of water. They don't pay for the cost of land. They don't pay for the cost of biodiversity. They don't pay for the damage that's being done. They don't pay for the carbon credits that they take out. What do they do? They come here, take the minerals, and make a profit. And they're given a five-year tax holiday on the first five years, even despite the price of nickel and ore coming up. Is this correct? They don't pay for the cost. They don't pay for the development cost. That's why they're making such a good profit. And you know why they come here to the Philippines? Because the people are poor. You know, you, you, you look at it. I, I, I went to uh, Palawan and I went to Nara. I went to place and I met pro-mining advocates. You know why they go there? Because they say, kailangan natin yung trabaho. Kailangan natin yung daycare. You know, they had big streamers about the kailangan natin like this and this and this. They're poor. So when the people are poor, you just give them thingy thingy, they will accept whatever they whatever you give them.